Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 11, Part 4. Welcome to Part 4. In Part 4, we're going to learn how to train the S&P 500 prediction program. Mostly, we have used simulated annealing, backpropagation, and genetic algorithms to train the neural networks in this course. We have used these training methods independently. However, they can be used in conjunction to create hybrid training. We're going to create a hybrid training technique that is based on both simulated annealing and backpropagation. Backpropagation will be the main training algorithm that we use, but if the error rate is no longer improving that radically from backpropagation, we're going to use simulated annealing. If backpropagation begins to fail as a training algorithm, it most likely means that the data has, or that the neural network has entered something called a local minimum. This is a local area where we have reached a good training level, but there are other, there is another global minimum which is the true optimal training location for the neural network. We need to get the weight matrices past this local minimum and onto the global minimum. That is what the simulated annealing algorithm is used for. The program detects that we have reached a point where backpropagation is no longer performing adequately and it will briefly kick in simulated annealing to attempt to get the neural network past this local minimum. We will begin by looking at how we actually implement the training for this program. Let's see how the hybrid training process actually works. Here you see part of the training process. We are looping through iterations using the backpropagation algorithm. You can see that the rate by iteration 1511 is still decreasing, but it's not decreasing terribly fast. This is because the neural network training has entered a local minimum. This is an area where the error rate becomes minimal, but it's not the best error rate that this program can achieve. To get the program past the local minima, we need to use another training algorithm such as a genetic algorithm or simulated annealing. We are going to use simulated annealing. Simulated annealing will be invoked because the program has detected by this point, by iteration 1520, that the training is no longer progressing satisfactorily. It is going to now invoke simulated annealing. At iteration 1521, it now invokes simulated annealing. It is going to try simulated annealing for five iterations. Notice the error rate near the top before we invoke simulated annealing. It's at about 10%. After the first iteration of simulated annealing is invoked, we immediately drop to just a little above 4%. We then continue simulated annealing for five more iterations. For this particular circumstance, simulated annealing does not do anything further than the 4%. Once we have reached this, these five iterations of simulated annealing that we try, the program continues on its way with backpropagation. After the simulated annealing has been invoked, the backpropagation continues decreasing the error rate in a more slow fashion. This will continue until the algorithm is trained. Now let's see how the hybrid training was actually implemented. Here you see the train backpropagation function that is called. This function begins a normal backpropagation training loop. We set the last error so that we can register and see how much error has improved, and we set the epoch number to 1. The last time that we've annealed is 0 because we've never annealed before. We want to keep track of how recently we've annealed because we don't want to just continually invoke it. We want to invoke it after backpropagation hasn't done much for a while. We then enter the do loop and we begin iterating over the backpropagation algorithm. We display the current iteration number, the, which is the epoch number, and the error. We continue this process. In the next slide we'll see how we detect that backpropagation should be replaced with simulated annealing. If the error is greater than 5%, then we consider possibly invoking simulated annealing. 
If the last time we have annealed is over 100 iterations, which means we've done 100 iterations of backpropagation, and the error is greater than the last error, so, sim so backpropagation has started to actually slightly increase the error over one iteration, which means it is no longer that effective, then we train with simulated annealing. We continue after we've trained with simulated annealing or not, if it's just a normal iteration, by keeping track of the last error so that we can tell if we exceed the last error. We increase the epoch by one and we can increase the last time that we've annealed by one. We keep training so long as the error is above the maximum error. The annealing loop is relatively simple. It is implemented in the train network anneal function. Here you can see it reports to us that we're about to train with simulated annealing for five iterations. We set up a basic simulated annealing algorithm called train and we prepare to train. We set the epoch to one and we train over five iterations. We do this with a simple for loop. We don't, this is a relatively simple implementation of annealing. We are going to only invoke it for five iterations. This is usually enough to get the backpropagation off of the local minimum that it seems to encounter when training for the S&P 500 data. We'll continue for these five iterations and then return to the backpropagation processing. This concludes part four. In the next part, we're going to actually put this neural network to the test. We've constructed it and we've trained it. Now it's designed to see how well it actually predicts on future values for the S&P 500. We hope you will continue with part five. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.